you can do the old school hand raise and I'll see that can bring you in for everyone else. If you look at the bottom of your zoom window, there's like a more button on here, or it might just say raise hand somewhere. So there's a way to raise your hand digitally speaking. Uh, and then I can answer any and all questions you have and uh, we can, we can get into it and go from there. So first up is Nina. Go ahead, Nina. Hi, thank you so much. And I love your podcast. I've been just like, completely diving into that and getting so much value from it can i can i, can I so, ask you just selfishly something quickly do you okay. do you find more do you find more value in like the hardcore tactical marketing stuff on there or do you find more value in the customer interviews or just like you know nick and i ranting about whatever i feel like it's a mix it's a mix of the mindset stuff the tactical stuff hearing how different clients are buying it i like the combination like coming at it from different angles myself okay awesome thank you for that um, yeah, thank you. Um, so my question, just because I'm not really sure how long, how much longer I can stay on the call, is like, what would be the next step? Because um, I know that at whether I can do it this second or if it's going to be a little bit down the road, I would love to like move forward with our storefronts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just kind of curious, like, what the next like, like step of the exploration yeah. Um, process? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. So you know, the 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 next step is just to get a demo. And they schedule okay. a Zoom. They walk you through all the plans, all the packaging, all the bells, all the whistles, okay. all the things. And then, and then you can figure out like what does your timing look like, or what do you what do you need to focus on. But you're doing okay. you're you're doing the exact right thing in the meantime, which is you know just keep listening to the podcast because we're we're dropping all the latest and greatest on that one. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, so I saw that that shot dropped in the chat, so that's perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Nina. All right, I got to go back to yep, Judith. I got gotcha. you. Go ahead, Judith. Hello. Hi. I would like to be interested in what are there any particular kinds of artwork that you like that you would want to represent? Yeah, it it it, it to me one <laughs> one of the other things that I've learned which is just absolutely wild is no one can pick horses in this business. I have got customers that are so talented with the brush, I cannot tell the difference between the work and a photograph. They don't sell anything. I've got artwork you know, I, 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 I trained in photography in college and there's some people on our platform admittedly that I think take snapshots that, that don't even understand framing and yet they're selling incredibly well. You can't pick horses. There's, there's no path that works for everyone. There's no magical style and you never know. You never know until you try to give it a shot. Like the stuff that's sold, like we, we, we honestly like look at the, the sales channel because all of the sales pipe into this one channel so we can all see it visually. It is so across the board, so many different styles, so many different mediums, colors, sketches, charcoal, watercolor, pencil, mixed media. You know, we, we, we have some crafters on the platform now. It's, it's literally all over the place. And so I think you just start with what you have and in your wheelhouse and you give it a shot and you see how it goes. And if there needs to be course corrections, that's totally a normal part of the process too. Okay. Yeah. I'm not good at the researching and the um, computer stuff mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. So I'm very interested in um, of something that would help with the website building and maintaining because I'm just not very good at that. I, I, I find myself stumbling and struggling to the point where I get discouraged and I just don't want to do it anymore for yeah. a while. But yeah. I always go back because I am an inveterate crafter. Yep. That's the, I I'm do. telling you, that's the Hotel California right there, yeah, I work, you know? I work in many different mediums, and I'm, I just want to know where would be um, some place that would be able to help me promote all the different things that I do. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the other wild thing is like, you know, every one of you guys has probably had a conversation at some point in time in your career where a well-meaning person that's had success in some other area of life is giving you advice on what to do, and they're like, you know what you got to do is you just got to find out a niche and just set a niche. And if you could just have a niche instead of all over the place, you're gonna win. I found that's not true. Not in right. the closest. We've got people that are selling a myriad and a smattering of everything. The combinations of photography and art, different styles, different groupings. I mean, I've got, I've got one guy that, that is a photographer, okay? That does like these industrial gritty, like at night bridges and infrastructure around the St. Paul, M M Minneapolis area. Does, mm -hmm. does really well with that. Do you know what else he sells on his website? He loves going into Disneyland and taking photos inside the park. Like, how do you reconcile those two niches? They're not even close. They're not even in the same sport, right? But at the end of what? the day, it's his creative eye that people are resonating with, and, and, and it just works. It just works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
I like what I hear. Uh, and I've been listening the whole time. And I will make sure that if next time you have any kind of seminar that I definitely dial in. Uh, because the more information I can filter into my brain, the better it will be for me um, when I even want to offer something for sale. Awesome. Judith, appreciate you saying that. Love that you're getting value. Thank you so much. I will be back. Yep. I'm going to stay for the rest of the thing. I want to hear everybody else's questions, too. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Judith. Okay, I got to go back to the grid and see who's got to Yep, Patricia, I got you. And then whoever else, I'll, I'll, I'll do a call again. And then th if you want to do hands, go ahead. And you'll need to unmute, Patricia. Do I see her mic here? I'm going to find her name. It says you're unmuted. Could just talk for a second, Patricia. Yeah, so you're, you, you have the wrong mic selected. This happens normally. Don't worry about it. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner of your Zoom window, there's like this little up arrow. It's called a carrot. What that'll allow you to do is change your microphone. And my guess is, is that you probably just have the wrong microphone selected. Um, so that's, that's usually what happens in that scenario. So we'll give you a sec, see if you can get that. Yeah, I don't hear you yet. Keep playing with it, Judah. See if there's a different microphone you could select. And then plan B is the uh, the tech advice we give to everybody all the time, right? Which is, uh, 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 you know, yeah, hey, Mitch, before you go, I'm dying to know, where are you, dude? That background is so fascinating. What is what is going on there? <laughs> he looks like he's in a jet or something, you know? Looks like he's like piloting a plane or something. Uh, <laughs> it's just su it's super interesting. Um, Okay, who else has a question why Patricia's going to keep working on hers? And if it doesn't work, Patricia, I would just sign out and sign back in. You know, the, 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 the restart process is always the best. Oh, you guys are a shy bunch today. I see. I see how it goes. Uh, you can literally ask anything about anything, you know. Very, very. Yep, you gotcha. Yep. yep, thanks, Juan. Go ahead, Ray. Hi there. Hi. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm interested in what you are um, offering. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what it would cost and what the stages are of um, development and payment. Yeah. The commission, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah, great question. So we have... Why we do the demo process is because we have like a pretty serious myriad of options. Um, but the, easy, the easiest way to think about it is when you sign up for our storefront, you're getting two core products. You're getting the whole technology piece, the website, the POD, the backend, all of that stuff. And then you're essentially enrolling in a university, right? Where we just teach and support and, and, and uh, 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 educate and uh, how many different adjectives can I have? Morally support you all year long. So we charge a fee essentially to get into the university that you only pay once and then you just get that for the rest of your life. And then the whole technology piece is on a monthly subscription. But we have a bunch of different plans now. So in, in, in that's all we charge. There are transaction fees on some plans, but we also offer 0% transaction fees. And there's like a whole bunch of adjusting you can do. And you can, to be honest with you, you can move in or out or down or left or right at any point in time too. So it, it's just, it's, it's worth the time if, if your interest is peaked to go in there and get a demo so you can see all the things and then, and then, you know, make the decision. And Patrick, what do you say we can see all of these options? Yeah. So there's a demo process. Um, there's a link in the chat, or if you want me to have somebody reach out to you, I can do that too. So you don't have to fill anything out. Please. Yeah. I appreciate it. Juan, will you write down Barry's name? Pardon? No, I'm just oh, telling, I'm telling yeah, my colleague right. to write down your name. We'll, we'll have somebody email you directly, Ray. But I've already, I've sent you some samples, my website and. Oh, um, awesome. I'm happy to um, take the next step with you. Love it. Awesome. Thanks for saying that. Thanks, Ray. Okay. Next up is Richard. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, sure can. Okay, great. Um, so uh, this is, uh, thank you for the, for the demo. The Presentation. Yeah. And yet, if you will. Yeah. Um, so actually I've seen a demo. I did a demo with Kelly. I kind of want to do another demo. I'm actually really interested. Mm -hmm. I just have a lot on my plate. Yeah. And there's the deal that's happening now. It's a pretty good deal mm -hmm. you know, in terms of lifetime support, lifetime management, something like that. And yeah. then also what is, what's the deal is this, uh, uh, we signed up for life, lifetime free management. Lifetime yeah, so it's it's support. it's the tech assistant. So you just you don't ever have to update your website ever again. They handle one hundred percent of it. I mean, I need to continually put up new images in order no. to have image. No, you just send them to us and we put them up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, and then um, so here's my questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I know there's 
no, let's call ourselves the artist side, and then let's call the buyer the customer side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know from my initial discussions with Kelly that there's different, and hearing you, right, different. <laughs> it's art storefronts. Okay, so um, um, do the customers have to pay to use the site? No, of course not. No, no. Access no, the 360 I... and the, all that sort of stuff. That's our levels that we set up. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, do they have to pay to use the website? No. Do they have to pay to purchase your art? Yes, but you set the <laughs> you set the prices on that, right? We like, we'd like that idea. Yeah. Okay, so um, then on terms of reproductions and merchandise, mm -hmm. uh, is it, is it, did you say Bay Photo in the Bay Area? Yes. Right. That's a place down in San Jose, so they're doing all the large prints. Yes. Uh, the canvas and the uh, paper prints, right? Yep. Canvas, maybe, metal, the all, yeah, all, yeah, all so, the media types. And our prices on the first, though, that we get a discounted price at Bay Photo, and how do we set our prices on the web on the website? You do. You get so you get it. it, it there's so many different items. It's like the most complicated matrix in the history of mankind, and I don't quite frankly understand it. There are some items where you get cheaper than what Bay Photo advertises anywhere. Right, you can walk off the street and you get cheaper deals because we have bulk discounting thing going on. And then there are some where they're like sticklers, and it's the same price that you would pay if you walked in and said, "Hey, Bay Photo, I want you to print this for me." You know, but overall, on balance, it's cheaper than you would get if you went to Bay Photo yourself. That's number one. Number two, we have the guidelines on the markups that you should do on each and every single solitary piece. But it's of course up to you at the end of the day. We we tend to think that a tremendous amount of art oftentimes gets negotiated on and a tremendous amount of art oftentimes uh, uh, sells via sales and promotions. So we like to keep the 250% markup across the board as a, as a baseline recommendation. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's kind of a minimum kind of thing. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, Bay photo for like a, I think a, I priced them out on some 24 by 60 canvas hmm. with wrapped edges, you know, extended and, mirrored edges mm -hmm. and they were a little pricier so i actually didn't go with them yeah um they're but, they're uh, they're, they're sort of like you know the prestige brand name or certainly one of them in the united states but we do have another option which is called graphic dimension and they have all the same equipment as bay but they don't have like you know the big retail brand and storefront behind them so they're not it doesn't have like a public facing brand like bay does like you can walk into bay shop you know and they're constantly marketing doing everything else so they're actually cheaper um, than Bay Photo is on, on a number of different items. But you also have a, a, a tremendous amount of flexibility in your media types too, right? Like you don't have to offer the premium offering if you don't want to. You can offer a lower, uh, a lower quality canvas or lower quality paper to adjust your price too. It really just kind of comes down to what you want to do. What about proofs and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, they'll work, they'll work with you on proofs. Um, you know, by and large, it's like, like not even an issue that we run into all that often because Bay Photo is so good at what they do. Same with graphic, like... You know, if you get something and you're like, whoa, the colors are way off, then, you know, they'll they'll usually just take care of it right then and there and just say, all right, resend us so, the file. For example, let's just say mm -hmm. I put up a set of, or, you know, I have a photographic career. I, you know, I have been, I have sold a fair amount of work and I'm in a lot of collections. And then I started doing public art. And the last 10 years, I've been doing this collaborative public art stuff called Everybody Can Paint. And I've had... Mm -hmm half a million people painting with me over the last 10 years. Oh, awesome. And I haven't converted that to email addresses, right? I yeah. just basically, you know, I have a moderately small Facebook and Instagram followings of around 5,000 each, something mm -hmm. like that. But it's a start. And, yeah. um, and is that something you guys are, would able to work with the following I have and oh, go yeah. from there? Oh yeah. All day long, all day long. Okay. So on proofs of, and the merch, you guys are using Printful for merch? Uh, Guten. Guten is it is what it's called. So it's G O yeah G O O T E N. It's huge, huge print on demand company. Massive amount of items on there. Print on demand. Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I could look at that. Do they do print all over uh, wearables type stuff? Yep. Yep. Wearables. I mean, it's like cell phone cases and throw pillows and you know uh, uh, photo books and gift cards and coasters and yoga mats and and you know uh, there's like a, a huge range of stuff so yes and shirts and tank tops and all of that as well and if i have products on something like printful can i bring them into this context yeah so what you what you, what you would do is you would just add the item into your art storefront store 
when you get the order, you would have to manually just take care of it from there, however you want to do that, right? Um, so put the order through Printful and send it to the customer. That's that's normally how folks do it. So it wouldn't be a yeah, automated. It's, yeah, it's not integrated. Yeah. But if we go with your vendors, if it's a wearable, you guys do the same thing I normally do. You can put my label in it and put my, you know, something on the box it, or package that says it's coming from everybody can paint or whatever like that. Because I have fine art mm -hmm. and I have public art. Yeah. And then, you know, I listened to you today um, about what you were saying about uh, too many choices, I think is what it boiled down to. Analysis paralysis, okay. right. Because I have, uh, I have a lot of art. I have, you know, my, my original art is reproductions of my original art, which is photographic or mixed media and mm -hmm. paintings. Mm -hmm. And then I have all my public art, which is all collaborative murals. Yeah. This is. Is that too much to go with? No, not at all. I think there's a point where it, it becomes too much, but that's okay. Like, you know, you, you would lead with your best selling stuff and you're constantly adjusting up and adjusting down, right? The, 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 the conventional wisdom is like, if you have 2000 choices, it's just too confusing, right? So pare down the lineup a little bit, but it's, it's very easy to make those adjustments over time. Really, really easy. Like you could do a couple portfolios, 10 images, something like that. Exactly. Exactly. That would be over, that see, would not be over there. see how it. Yeah. Okay, see, last, see, last question. See how it does. Uh, yeah. I'm on marketing. Um, so for marketing, obviously you're doing the SEO on this, the search engine optimization, because it's your site. So your your platform. Yep. We 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 have an automatic SEO that that essentially does it for you. We've like handwritten some algorithms that that take the combination of what the media type is, what the description is, what the name is, and blending it into a search engine friendly result. So it's pretty much done for you out of the box. So it's not something you have to spend a ton of time on. Okay. And your social media platforms are Facebook and Instagram and nothing else, no TikTok or anything like that? We, you know, I explore all of them and attempt to in a, in attempt to figure out like where is it worth it to spend your time. And I also look at the data really, really closely of all like our 14,000 customers and study that both the actual data and then the anecdotal data. And our feeling sort of at a macro is like the number one priority, at least for right now, should be maxing out Instagram and Facebook because those are yielding the highest revenue that we're seeing and so that they're the most important. And I think most people would say that. I hear good things about TikTok, but I don't see a ton of good data on TikTok. But if you're marketing on TikTok, all of our strategies work, all of our video links work, all of those things work. We have some customers that have big followings on LinkedIn and if they have a big following on LinkedIn, LinkedIn can make sense uh, because you have a big following there. So we try to just maximize it to the platforms that are working the best. But uh, you know, one of the one of the crazy things is like, you know, we play the long game, right? Like we want you on the platform for thirty years, and you know, we've got a lot of customers we have that are that are in like year eight, year nine, and as I like wind the clock back just to the the landscape in like an eight or nine period, eight or nine year period, like the pendulum swung completely from Facebook to Instagram, right? And then it stayed in the Instagram ca camp, and now Facebook's on the wane a little bit. Twitter, was ne Twitter now X, was never a part of the, the, the conversation. Now we're starting to see some signs of life on X as a, as, a, as a valuable platform. And so it's always just constantly changing and the goalposts are moving a little bit, but you don't have to worry about any of that because we get there before you and we figure it out and then we teach. Yeah, it's quite a commitment financially to go forward with you guys on a level that makes it immersive, immersively more sticky for the people that are visiting the site. Mm -hmm. And then this is my last question. So I looked, I've been looking at the t different templates for the sites, and they all mm -hmm. look pretty similar to me. Yeah, it's like one big picture, three, one big picture, six. You know, and not as an artist, of course, we all have identities. Everybody in here feels that we have an aesthetic identity to our work. For sure, right? And um, and so is it possible to change the layout or ghost images on the background that is normally white so that you've got some, you know, 10% or 20% versions of our own work as a pat or something in the background. Can, can we, can we make it more interesting? Cause I see that the, you, you, you can, you, yeah, you can. I, and navigation I, is pretty much the same. You either have a top navigation or a side navigation. Yeah. 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 You know, it's, it's funny. Um, here's the rant that I have to go on, on this one. And then I promise I'll get to the rest of the questions too. You guys left to your own devices, artists, creatives, and wanting to treat the website like a, like a canvas is one of the biggest downfalls of artists I've ever seen. 
the paradigm for how art sells in the real world, okay? What is the best way that people buy art? What is the best way people consume art? It's either in a museum or an art gallery. Do you know what all art galleries and all museums have in common? Just about everything. Plain white walls, the art on the wall, the art well lit. So that the entire focus is on the art, it's not anything else. That is the paradigm of how art sells. And all we're attempting to do as digital sellers is take the paradigm that's already working in the real world and move it to the digital world. All of our websites are simple, minimalist, and are meant to look and mimic the experience that someone has in an art gallery. And when you do that, you find the conversion rates go up because the art is front and center. I look at some of these artists' websites and there are beautiful colors and framing and fonts and bells and whistles that if you even saw the art, it would be a modern miracle. So when you focus, when you focus the experience to look as closely as possible to the art gallery experience in the real world, watch what happens. You end up winning and converting more of the traffic into buyers. That one really gets you when you think about it, huh? It's like, oh man, that's so true. All of these websites look so fancy and buzzes and this and that. It's like, no, no, that, that is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to use the paradigm. So anyway, um, but good, Richard, you muted, all good? All right, awesome. All right, Patricia, I'm gonna come back to you because you were first and then I'll go Jane and then I'll go Joe. I don't know if you got it working, Patricia, or not. You can try it again. Ah, oh, boo. Yeah, so I, I can tell instantaneously, Patricia, that it's not working because I'm not getting any levels on the microphone. So yeah, see, you, you could try to plug in plug in headphones if you have headphones. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't hear you. I see, I see you listening, but I can't hear you. If you wanna throw your question in the chat, I can do that. Um, Jane, go ahead. Or I can have somebody call you too, Patricia, if you want. Um, you're up next. Me? Yeah, you. you mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Hi, so thanks. It's good to see you in person. I've been uh, texting with you. So oh, awesome. Um, I guess my main question is, if you ha already have a website mm -hmm. made, mm -hmm. does the, do you redo it or and does it uh, reduce the cost? Yeah, so if the website's doing anything for you now, right? if it's if it's if it's helping if it's helping out and it's driving business results, you could certainly potentially keep it, right? Um, but if it's not, it's not worth keeping. Just move on to ours and we're gonna build it for you anyway. So, you know, our techs can even go in and grab some of the stuff that you have on the old one so it makes the movement process easier. But there's so many bells and whistles and features and backend things that you wouldn't wanna stick with your, your existing website. Now, there are certain situations where people do. I've got a lot of photographers that have like, a service-based portion of their business. And they're like, I'm not getting rid of that, right? So what do I do? So they'll have their service-based website and then they'll put the art storefront site on like store.patrick.com, right? Or store.janemorrison.com. And that's, that's where sort of the online art gallery is and then they still have the service-based website. So also an option that you can, you can go about if you want. Okay. Um, I mean, I was, I was thinking You'll probably have to do a lot. I haven't really done anything on it, and be, nothing selling because I don't even have prices on things. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it was more for just people to go on and look at my work. Yeah, portfolio and site, not necessarily so to speak. buy things. Yeah, um, but so many of the images and the text and all this stuff is already there. Got it. Right. So you would be taking that, right? You'd be using that stuff. Yeah, we'd use as much of it as we could. Well, we would likely need you to upload some images to us, um, but that would be it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I already did a demo, mm -hmm. I believe. No, no, I didn't yet. Is that where we talk about price and all of that? Yeah. They'll walk you through all the plans, all the packages, all the everything. Okay. So you could just respond to okay. one of those emails and they can set it up. Or if you want... Um, I can I can have Juan put your name on the list and we can call you if that's easier. Okay, that would be good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take care of it for you, Jim. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Next up is Joe Owens. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, Patrick. Hey. Uh, great stuff. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. Great. Um, I fall squarely in the camp of uh, a, a very amateur photographer who's mm -hmm. you know kind of exploring. Can my stuff really sell? And mm -hmm. if I put the investment of money, time, and consistency into it, 
is there a market? So I was hoping you could talk a little bit about from your end, what you see, what is the market? What's the demand? Who's buying yeah. this stuff? And, and how do we achieve the volumes, you know, necessary to, you know, make the investment worth worthwhile? Yeah, great question. Um, on one part, it's a crystal ball question, because what I've, what, I've think, what I've sort of learned is like attempting to compare yourself to anyone else in any capacity. And like the, the versions of this question I get, what are the best selling sizes? What are the best selling media types? What are the best niches? What's the best subject matter material? To think like that you could go into one of the other ones that's doing the best, and there isn't a best, by the way. It's just such a random mixed bag uh, that, that trying to reverse engineer it that way doesn't work. What I would say more broadly, though, is that if you're willing to give it a shot and you want it, I can guarantee you whatever you think in your head now is your niche will not be your niche. You will end up discovering something else as a result of going through this process that ends up hitting and that thing that hits, that's where you end up and you never would have been able to guess it before. It's sort of, it's sort of like, you know, I liken it to like a game of archery, right? Like you're firing a bunch of arrows at that target and sometimes it goes into the fence and sometimes it goes into the neighbor's yard and then sometimes it goes onto the target and you're like, oh, I'm on the target, I've got something here. But you keep firing, right? And it's, it's a little bit of this iterative process that once you learn how to do it, everything will change. Literally everything will change. You know, a perfect example is like one of the things that we advocate our customers do, and I advocate 100% of them do this, I'm the marketing guy, of course I do, is have a commissions button on your site. Because what a commissions button is, is like, Joe, I really like your work. I like your eye. I'm willing to pay you for something else. Take my credit card, right? And so even if you don't want to do the commissions work, it is a fantastic discovery engine to figure out what some of these new niches. I would also say broadly that DNA, nature, nurture, they're born with it. Some of the most successful folks I see just iterate all the time by default. So they're constantly hopping around these different subject matter materials, right? And when you do that, you're exposing yourself to all these different markets and all these different audiences, especially so with the algorithms, the way that it works in social, they've gotten so good that they scan the image, they know exactly what it is, they know exactly the kind of people that like that thing, and then they go out and find them for you. And that's an amazingly powerful thing. So I, I, I really think it comes down more, Joe, to like, I love this enough, I really want this to be a thing for me, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot, you'll pay back your investment and then some. It's just a matter of how much time it takes and what different subject matter materials you get there. And let me tell you, it's almost never what you think. It's almost never what you think. It's like such a mixed bag, you know. Juan and I laugh because we have this customer and she she comes in with her painting and she's, she's super switched on. She's attending the workshop. She's super fired up asking all these questions. And then she starts telling Juan about her social media growth. And I'm like, what the heck is going on there? Like that's some insane social media growth. How are you do? How is that happening? What are you doing? Are they all buying your art? It turns out she is so good at painting clouds that everybody wants to learn from her how she's painting clouds. And I'm talking about like from zero to like 50,000 on Instagram in like four months. And, and her name's like Selma and I'm like, Selma, I love you. I know you wanna sell your art, but the market is telling you something here, okay? you need to start creating courses immediately and selling private courses on how to paint clouds because you're gonna have thousands of customers. I know that wasn't the original vision for where you're going, but this is a reaction the likes of which I've never seen, right? And, and, and these types of things, yeah, go on through the Instagram account in the chat. These types of things are happening all the time, all the time. So that's, that's, that's the right way to answer that question. As a final, just just out of, just out of curiosity, I'm curious what you do shoot though, because now now I'm down the rabbit hole in this. Yeah, what do? Yeah, no worries, and, and that's you know I, I have a lot of different things, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, nostalgia, Route 66, a lot of yeah. a lot of landscape, a lot of animals, um, that sort of thing, um, and that's that. You know, I, I think the the main thing I was searching for is my healthy skepticism is that there's hundreds of thousands of us artists and. Yeah tens of thousands of people who are actually willing to spend $500 to put something on their wall. Um, or do you see it differently? Are there millions of people who are willing to spend $500 to put something on their wall? Yeah, there's, there, it's, it's even better than that because yes, there are millions of people that are willing to put things on their walls in all these different capacities. Also, yes, 99% of the artists don't do anything to get their attention. So even by being like, you know, it, it goes back to that consistency thing that I said. It's like, even if you're mildly consistent, you're going to win because you're competing against no one 
<laughs> because no one no one can keep it going that way, right? Um, does Jim Livingston ring a bell? That name, huge Route sixty six guy. No, um, he does really well with the Route sixty six stuff, actually. Um, so I I know that does work as a niche, but yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That helps. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Uh, go ahead, Richard. Yep, gotcha. I, I I would rather follow other people that maybe not ha haven't had a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. Well, you're the last one with the hand up. Let, let me see if there's anyone else. Okay, Is there right. anyone else with the hand up? So, um, guys, put your hands up. I know you all have questions. Anyways, um, so what about? I just put a little note in the chat there. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have these two things. I have the Richard Art Felix. This is me. Dolly, I'll get you next. Created right mm -hmm. the fine art, and everybody can paint, which is my public art, mm -hmm. and. Visually, they're very different. One is, you know, mixed media, photography, some paintings, but that's my legacy art. And the everybody can paint is what I've been doing the last 10 years, and it just eclipsed my fine art career. So I do it all the time. I get engaged to do these live pieces. Yep. Everybody can paint is my site that people go to to find out what I do so they can engage me to come to their company, their school, their festival. I love it. I love it. Right. But so now I want to peel off the next level, level of revenue off it to support doing more art, of course, yeah. which is the reproduction. So I've got these two potentially genres and I would like to have them in the context of here but as as art not experience mm -hmm. everybody can paint more about experience so there's that that's that question will they both fit in one site will they both work in one site that mm -hmm. kind of thing and that's question one question two is what about selling originals you know it's just a good site for selling originals oh, yeah just... all day all, all day long it's great it's great for selling originals um and if your price points are in the Two thousand to ten thousand range is that too much? But no, not at all. I've got customers that have price points, you know, high six figures. So I'm gonna put things on there over a million. Like you know, anything, anything that happens in the real art world can easily just go on, go, go with online, right? And if I were you, I would just combine all of those things onto one site and write it. And we would obviously teach you a ton of strategies to better monetize uh, uh, that audience that you're generating on the side, right? And figure out what what new revenue opportunities that exist there, and you know how you can capture more email addresses and drive demand. I, yeah, I think I got that. And, and and how how do you or we or us mm -hmm. drive traffic? How many visitors come? Do visitors go to art storefront and look for artists? No, it's not. A, it's not a marketplace like that. that yeah, it, it goes direct. No, it, it goes directly to your website. It's your website. You own it, and we teach you how to drive traffic to it all year, and in some cases, so help you drive traffic to it. What drives visitors to it? Regular and consistent marketing. What's that? regular and consistent marketing. Like there's things that you're not doing on your Instagram account. There's things that you're not doing on your Facebook account. In your, in your case, there's a million things that you're not doing in those events to better take advantage of that. And you start working on all of those things. You start leveraging some of the outbound lead capture strategies that we have. We do a ton of stuff around giveaways. We, we, we have a bunch, but it's, 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 the, it's you know, the blocking and tackling, right? The basics that, that no one ever does consistently. When you start doing it, you just start getting momentum and it's momentum everywhere. And, it, and the traffic grows and it continues growing and it happens consistently and it doesn't happen overnight and, and it keeps going. You capture more emails. I mean, with you and your events, I could teach you how to capture thousands of emails out of those events in a single solitary year. When you email a thousand people, you're gonna get like three or 400 hits every single solitary time, right? From that audience. And so you start, you start looking at all of those types of opportunities, but also growing what you're doing on Facebook, what you're doing on Instagram, you know, what you're doing with your email capture, uh, uh, all of the above. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and that's the marketing package. So we do the marketing. So we have this. There's two parts. There's, there's at least two parts that I understand and that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. One is that we build the site, mm -hmm. we the management of the long-term tech assistant yep. for life. Yep. And then the continual updates, and then we have this marketing program. Yes. And that's. Can you? Could you explain that? Yeah. So can you yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, I can explain it more in depth and, and you definitely, you said you already saw a demo, but you probably definitely need to go back and see one again. I mean, we're, we're iterating it like an alarming. Yeah. Clip. I just signed up to see it again. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so many things that we're doing. So what Copilot does, the easiest way to think about what Copilot does is that it does what a gallerist would do. What would a gallerist do? It would talk to anybody that comes in the front door. It would show everybody all your pieces. It would tell stories about you. It would help people with pricing, let people know where they can buy it. 
you know, and occasionally run promotions to try to get people in the door. It does that. It rotates through your collection. It posts regularly and frequently on the socials. It runs sales when it's time to run appropriate sales. What we need out of you, though, is that other 50%, right? What we can't do for you, which is, you know, who is Richard? What is he interested in? What does he do when he's not doing art? What makes him interesting? What makes him tick? What, what, what does he have in his personal life that I might get bonded to, that I might, that I might want to know more about, right? So Copilot takes care of a bunch of that for you, and we're like rapidly iterating on that product currently. It's, it's gonna turn into this just giant art marketing hub where all of your assets, all of your resources get uploaded there. They all get categorized, and then you can just post directly to all the socials from there. Um, so that's what we do. But you know, everyone's different, right? And the fact that you're getting all of those gigs that you are, and all of those people are coming out, like. I would get laser focused on that right away because you clearly have something that's working there. And so it's about how do we take the most advantage out of every single solitary one of those scenarios, right? Like sort of the, the, the corollary is like, I've got a bunch of service-based photographers, ones that do the baby pictures and the Christmas cards and all this, right? And they're like, okay, I love this part of my business, but I actually, I want to start selling my fine art. And it's like, w do you see this customer base you have? These people love you. They know, like, and trust you. They keep calling you for more cards and more business. Have you let them know you're selling fine art? There's always low hanging fruit wins like that, right? Because people want to buy from people they know, you know, that they have a relationship with. So that's what I would say. Yeah, thanks Richard. Barry, we'll throw a link in the chat for you. Um, Michael, before you got your hand up, um, Dolly had her, so I'm gonna grab Dolly and then I'll grab Michael and then I'll get to Judith again. Go ahead, Dolly. Um. I think I'm unmuted now. Can yeah, you sure. Me? Yep, I sure can. Yeah, so that last gentleman who's been talking a lot during this, I think his name is Richard. Mm -hmm. He made a statement like he's had some of your, um, oh, whatever, those other last, you know, private chats or whatever, demos, mm, the demos yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he made a statement that, boy, it's sinking in a, I'd be sinking in a lot of money mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. But what I under, from what I understand of what you've been putting on Instagram now, it's a flat fee. I'm going to say roughly around fifteen hundred bucks that you pay once to join, mm -hmm. and then it's a monthly fee. And the monthly fee includes the the website setup. Yep. The marketing. There's so it's not it's not the full time marketing package, but. We, we, we're constantly doing deals and like rotating through things. And so sometimes the marketing stuff is included. Sometimes the tech assistant is included. You know, that's what's in there right now. But yes, practically speaking on balance, that's what you pay and that's it. But what he's comparing it to is like, you can go and get a site on Squarespace for $17 a month, right? But you know, that's why we do the demo process. It's like, you know, there's so much more value here on, on what we're delivering. And the reason that we charge what we do is because there's an army of people that are gonna support you for the rest of your art selling life, which is what we believe is what, you know, keeps you going consistently. But yes, you, broadly, you're completely right on price. And there's lower end tiers and there's higher end tiers. It's admittedly complicated, which is why we do the demo process. Yeah, I'm gonna have to call on a demo, but just from what he said it, mm -hmm. it he made it sound pricier than what I've heard you say. And there's been so much, you've done so much advertising lately on Instagram. Yeah. I talked to you guys maybe about a year ago and now I'm thinking of it. I have, I know two people personally that use your mm -hmm. service and they're pretty pleased. So, you know, it's making me think about it a little bit more. That's um, awesome. I guess the one other question too, is that print on demand part of the initial package or is that an extra fee no also? no 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 that comes standard on all plans and oh i know what my other question was he, he talked so much i forgot what my question was but now i remember so if you do that um like you look at our instagram feed and our facebook feed mm -hmm. do you also like figure out those algorithms to make it work better <laughs> yeah um I, i'm laughing because there's like you know the entire world is trying to figure out the algorithms and all the algorithms do is just change all the time it's like it, that part is the fool's errand but we don't have to worry about that we focus on the things that we can control that are the most important which is like you here, here's here's the here's the easiest way to think about algorithms okay because the algorithm in a sense is nonsense the algorithm just equals an audience right so right. the way the way that you win is that you're posting 
regularly and consistently in a different range of content, which we school you on, teach you on, help you create. And when you do, you find out what's really resonating for you, and then you just do more of that, right? And anybody can do this. Where people get hung up is they're like, okay, I tried to figure out the algorithm, I posted on Instagram, and I posted two of my photos, and nothing happened, so I'm quitting, right? It's, it's through the regular and consistent posting that we figure these things out. Now, do we figure out little tweaks and little hacks and little tricks that we teach you all the time? Yes, we do. Uh, and we post an obscene amount on Instagram, as you've seen, so I'm learning these things faster than everyone else is. But by and large, we don't have to worry about the algorithm. It's focusing on what we can do, which is being regular and consistent, and the score takes care of itself. May I phrase it in a different way? Please, please. So there's um, a couple of gentlemen um that are out there and so i did marketing on facebook for a business i was mm -hmm. in before mm -hmm. actually i worked for the government okay and you know how on facebook they have that you can boost and when you boost you pick all those different parameters for your audience and yeah. stuff mm -hmm. but there's a couple of people out there that are pressing that idea for art marketing and say you know, they can do that, find that perfect group that you're supposed to market to. Mm -hmm. Does that mean algorithms? No, I mean, that's that's normally like, you know, try my Facebook or Instagram ads course secret for one low payment of ninety nine ninety five. I'll show you how to find your magical audiences. Like there's about a million of those different authors out there. Um, I've never in my 10 years of, of being in this business, I've, I've, I've only seen one thing that every single solitary artist and photographer that's advertised a bunch on Facebook or Instagram or Google or Twitter, the only thing I've seen in common with all of them is that none of them, none of them have ever done it long term. And the reason they've never done it long term is because it doesn't work and it's not an ROI positive activity. Now, there's some things that you can do within ads that helps you, but Ultimately, at the end of the day, it, 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 it's not a super advantageous way to go about it, um, it, in my experience. So we have a number of different ways that we do recommend artists and photographers advertise um, through, mm -hmm. through some different techniques and tactics. But yeah, mm -hmm. big picture gaming the system, magical formulas is, is, is not our speciality. Yeah, so I want to arrange a demo, mm -hmm. but I have to tell you, I did have, I didn't have the demo, but I had somebody call me from your group which i'm sure you have a gigantic staff mm. and um i don't know the call on the phone was too abrupt and i'm working full time so it was mm -hmm. hard to connect and and really hear the person and understand so maybe i think um it wasn't a demo though it was just yes a phone it, was, call. it was the discovery call do this don't do anything we'll put your name on a list i'm going to go find out who had that call that was abrupt and i might even listen to that call because i hate hearing that and then I will have somebody reach out that's that's super favorable for you. All right. All right. Well, that's it. You go on. I got to go on. I'm just home from work and I got to kick my feet back. I, I know the feeling. Enjoy it. You've earned it. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey, Michael, you're up next. Uh, Patrick, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sure can. Yeah. Michael Parchment here from Connecticut. Listen. You know, I've been following you guys for a while, um, mm -hmm. a couple of years, and, and every time I hear you on Facebook, it's really interesting to hear what you guys have to say, and I really appreciate the effort and the um, the stuff that you put forward for artists, you know? So, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate um, you saying that. Yeah, but, and yeah, and I think it's, and I think you guys are doing a really great job, and at some point, I am going to probably do a demo and, I, I, and probably join the team, so... Awesome. You know, um, but I just wanted to say that I'm so bummed that I missed the million dollar lady, though. Yeah, Meg. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I was trying to, uh, because for some reason, I, I guess the, the, the time was four o'clock. And I guess because we're in the eastern time zone in, up in up north. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was like one somewhere else and then central time again. Yeah. So I, guess I got it a little kind of confused. But um, did you did you was, did you did you watch the replay, though? No, I'm gonna watch the replay. So yeah. I'm looking forward to watching the yeah. replay. So. Yeah, you got it. She's she's awesome. She has an amazing story, and you know, yeah, she's like, you know, in the in the tech world, they 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 have this name called unicorns for companies that right. reach a billion dollar valuation. Okay. For right. me, in the artist world, an artist that's good at art and really good at marketing, that's a unicorn. Yeah. She's a unicorn. You know, okay. that is like not normal. That is not normal. <laughs> 
but you know, there's, I hear you. yeah, there's, there, there's so much that we can learn, you know, from her and study her and, yeah. you know, and then I, I also think you should check out Jonah. Jonah's mega inspiring too. And I don't know if you saw him, he's the, the long haired surfer looking dude. That's a photographer. Okay. He, um, he's, he's having hundred thousand dollar months. Yeah, which wow. is which is really really impressive. Juan, will, will you get will you get the links to both of those posts and just throw them in the chat so people have them? Are you still in here? I don't know if Juan's still in here. Oh yeah, he is. So I'm the first yeah. thanks. The, the the first link is the replay um, of Meg. Her story is mega interesting, mega inspiring. Um, okay. And then the second one, I literally you you, you got to listen to the second one because I, I I find Jonah to be, you know, I mean the kid's thirty years old. 30 years yeah. old and he's just crushing it. So they're both really, really good stories. But I've been doing, um, I've been doing a ton of customer interviews recently right. and, and, and right. just having an absolute blast with them. Like <laughs> I did this one today, my friend, Brian, this guy, this guy is so insanely talented. Like these yeah. are, these are his paintings that he spends like 250 okay. wow. hours. I'm, looking, I'm seeing them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He, he is, he's Ma he, masterful. Oh, yeah. it's, it is, it is masterful. And yeah. I, I just did this full interview with him, um, today and I'm trying to get this one where he has like a time lapse of it, but I, I just, it, he, I, I guess where I'm going with it is like, it's great to tell the stories of the people that are like mega successful and at the million dollar range. And we tell some of those, which are fantastic, it. but it's, it's, it. it's fun to tell some that are like, you know, in the middle of the journey too, you know, yeah. that, that, That's that are just true, getting yeah. there. But anyway, um, I was just thinking about that. It's making me thirsty for a glass of wine now. Um, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Um, and, but, che um, and check out the podcast too, Michael, if you haven't. There's there's a ton of good I, intel on that thing. I will. So I just want to say thanks again. I really appreciate you guys. And at some point, I am going to do the demo, and I definitely want to get on board. So um, looking forward to doing that pretty soon too. So awesome. awesome. All right, sir. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, really All appreciate right. it. Thanks, Michael. All right, guys. I'm worn out. I'm tuckered. I'm out of gas. I'm out of steam. I've had to run like three of these things today. But I appreciate all you guys. I'm going to send a follow-up email uh, that'll have the recording. So if you want to go back and watch any of it, see any of it, you can do that. Um, we also include some great resources in there. There's links to the podcast. Um, there are uh, 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 links to some articles that I have in terms of how to price your art and how to approach that. If any of you guys are doing fairs and shows, I wrote like the most comprehensive guide on how to do fairs and shows. We've learned a ton from our customers about the best ways to monetize those experiences, capture the most emails, do the most that you can. And yeah, for all, for all else, um, you can get a demo. Lord knows where, Lord knows we'll keep emailing you, right? Because it's not like we email too much. We're working on it, okay? We're working on it. There's a support group apparently I need to go to. Um, we're, we're working on emailing less. So I really apologize about that. But thank you guys for all your time. Uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation. Hope you learned something. And I'm live on Instagram all the time and Facebook. Anytime you see that live button, any question you have, okay? doesn't matter whether you're a customer or not. Leave the question. I love answering them. Um, if I can help or direct you towards a resource, that's what I'd love to do. So really appreciate you guys. Bye now.